Welcome everyone to Banana Bread Trades. My name is Goose and in today's video by popular request we are going to be going over the Rocket Scooter app. I've been using Rocket Scooter for probably over four years now back before it was even called Rocket Scooter when it was just some random guys in a discord putting a bunch of numbers into an excel sheet and we were just trying to calculate some random options values. Um, but now the guys have made like a full-blown app that actually plots all the levels and everything that we were calculating onto a chart and it's incredibly useful and we talk about it in the discord all the time i trade with it every single day and honestly i've gotten to the point where i almost won't trade without it and if you're part of the discord you'll see that you know when this gets posted every single morning we are generally able to plot out a pretty accurate game plan for the day i wouldn't say that it gives me exact levels that i'm taking trades and taking profit well sometimes it does but for the most part it's really giving me a guide on my bias for the day as well as knowing when to have risk on and risk off and really where to have that risk on and risk off so yeah in this video we're just going to be going over how i trade it now i know everyone trades everything completely differently and if you have your own style of trading it that's awesome comment down below what you like to do but in this video we're just going to be talking about what is rocket scooter and how I personally trade it. All right, so let's go over this chart and what exactly we're looking at when we log into the app. So when you log into the app, you're going to be greeted with a whole bunch of these zones and lines and everything. And this is all auto plotted for you at market open every single day. And the first thing that we're going to talk about is this thing called HP. And this is called hedge pressure. And there's also monthly hedge pressure, which when we zoom out is way down here. And what is hedge pressure and monthly hedge pressure? Well, they are the max gamma risk of options sold to the stock dealers by options dealers. And if we want that in smooth brain terms, terms that I prefer, <laughs> it is just a liquidity pocket for weekly options for hedge pressure. That's this uh blue line here that's hedge pressure so it's the liquidity pocket for weekly options and then this orange line down here this is monthly hedge pressure this is the liquidity pocket for monthly options and every single day when i log on to the app and look at this thing at market open i am looking for the configuration of monthly hedge pressure and hedge pressure and what we've found is when hedge pressure is above monthly hedge pressure, then the overall view of this stock or option, or whatever you're looking at, is bullish. And when monthly hedge pressure is above hedge pressure, then the overall view of that underlying stock or option is very bearish, right? So we're going to be looking at that thing First off, like, are we overall bullish on the day or are we overall bearish on the day? And I'll even show you an example of plotting just hedge pressure and monthly hedge pressure. Let me zoom in here a little bit if I can. So this is for the entire month of January. The orange line is monthly hedge pressure and the blue line is hedge pressure. And ignore the yellow lines, those are just initial balance. But as you can see, when he monthly hedge pressure is above hedge pressure then the market really has a lot of resistance above right we're not going to find a lot of ability to move up and then as soon as that flips and we get hedge pressure above monthly hedge pressure then the market becomes overall bullish again as you can see right here hedge pressure and monthly hedge pressure were practically the exact same level and when we get that we know that we are going to squeeze really hard in one direction or the other and when they get really really close like that it's really hard to kind of have a statistical probability on which direction it's going to go you just know that it's going to be really violent in one direction and so in this case this is where we broke above and then we had that just extreme squeeze to the upside triggering this bull market and then we had as you see here lots of days where hedge pressure is above monthly hedge pressure and we were overall bullish. I mean, it doesn't mean that we can't have down days or we can't have moves to the downside. It just means in the overall grand view that we're going to be bullish. 
Now, we come over here to about midway through January, and all of a sudden we have monthly hedge pressure above hedge pressure. So what did this do? It just had a massive sell-off day, right? We just sold off the entire day, closed at the low a day. Next day, we flip again. Monthly hedge pressure is below hedge pressure, and the bull market resumes. And as you can see, it got really tight right here. We have this violent, violent squeeze. And then we see this right here. And when we have this massive separation of hedge pressure and monthly hedge pressure, with monthly hedge pressure way down below, we are going to be in for a very non-volatile bull market. So we can have sell-offs. That's appropriate. Like, that's, that's fine. But the overall view, like the macro view, is bullish. So that's what I'm looking for with hedge pressure and monthly hedge pressure is what is the overall macro view of the market this day? So I hope this example kind of helps you a little bit. Um, as far as hedge pressure itself, I don't necessarily always take trades directly off of it unless it really lines up with some sort of level of confluence or I see some sort of massive buying or selling going on at that level. Um, with ES especially, it can get really grindy around hedge pressure just because of all the volume that's there. Um, NQ is a little bit better, or QQQ is a little bit better. It's a little bit more volatile around these levels. But yeah, I don't necessarily take trades directly at hedge pressure. Now, at monthly hedge pressure, because of the impact it has, it's with monthly options, there's a lot more volume stacked around it. So I'll almost always take a bounce off of monthly hedge pressure, regardless of the direction, I'm going to try that bounce. The next thing that we want to look at, and something that is very important, is the walls. Now, what is the technical definition of the walls? These are options sold to dealers of the underlying stock who is hedging being in a position against bull or bears. Basically, it's just where heavy call volume is and heavy bear volume is that's my smooth brain definition of it right if we're in the bull zone we know that there's a lot of call option volume there obviously it's way more complicated than that and the algorithm for the walls looks for a pure bull bear risk distribution in that options chain and that's why we can have such clean breaks between these walls but for me i just need to know that hey a lot of calls going in the money here. A lot of puts going in the money here. So that's, that's what I'm looking for. And this is kind of how we start to plan out our day. So we're looking at hedge pressure, monthly hedge pressure setup, right? How are they configurized? Is hedge pressure above MHP? Okay, we're overall bullish. Now, where are we within the walls, right? So in this case here today, we opened up within a bare wall. Right, so we open up in some real put area. And what that's going to mean for us is that it's going to be really volatile, right? We have two people fighting each other, right? We have these option, these, these puts that are trying to go in the money where the macro market is actually bullish, right? So we can expect vol volatility in these days. However, the market did try to break into the bull zone. And it, it made it there. But then we ended up falling right back inside and we just traded in between these two walls for really the rest of the day. And in between these two walls is what I like to call the decision area. And we didn't leave that decision area today, which leads me to believe that tomorrow is going to be a pretty nasty trend day one way or the other. So yeah, that's, that's basically the walls. That's HP, MHP. And then the last thing you're going to see on here is this redistribution zone, this HG and open and close. The redistribution zone is just yesterday's close and today's open. It's just your gap, right? It's just your overnight gap. It's really simple, nothing to it. And then HG is just your half gap, right? That's the midpoint between yesterday's close and today's open. And so what we're looking at with half gap especially in the options chain, right? QQQ, SPY, whatever else options you trade. That half gap is very important because let's say that we opened here in the bull zone 
and we came down and tested half gap. We would expect half gap to hold in a bullish situation and then continue trending up for the rest of the day. Any break of half gap means that there is really strong selling pressure and we're most likely going to go fill the gap and maybe continue trending downwards. Right, so we look at half gap very closely and Rocket Scooter has it manually plotted on here every day because it is such a highly statistical probable level that we're going to test almost every single day. Right, and I am almost always taking trades at half gap and I'm still watching all the other stuff that I talk about volume profile delta time and sales but those half gap levels especially in a more clean situation I'm almost taking those half gap trades every single time so now let's talk actual trading setups and some of the golden setups that I like to use every single day and don't worry when you're new to this it's going to take a while to kind of learn all of these different configurations and everything. And luckily on the app, as you can see here on the right, they've recently added this liquidity map setup. So it's showing you what the trade plan is for the current setup. And as like, like we saw today, it, it said uh, that we're going to be stuck in between these walls, right? This is a wall. This is a wall. And it said, hey, we're probably just, there's all the volume is going to be in the middle, probably going to range until we break out hard one way or another. And that is exactly what we did in between those walls. So now I'm going to show you some more clean setups, I guess, because that setup there, I mean, it's, it's a tight range. It's not a risk on situation. <clears throat> it's more of a, let's take some range scalps. Let's trade let's trade to the middle right we're not holding for one direction or the other we're not going to have these massive good trade days on these types of days because with me I, I don't like ranges as much i mean i know it's a range until proven otherwise but then when you go to actually trade the range then it's no longer a range and then you're like ah you know it's uh, it's tough but let me start off with just the perfect golden setup for me i'm just i screenshotted this here we're just going to draw it out so let's say we have a bare wall right here. Okay. And now let's say our call wall is right here, right? Really nice, clean break, big walls too. Sometimes we'll have situations where like it's a really thin bare wall, really thin bull wall, really thin bear wall, and it just alternates and they're really thin. When you see liquidity maps like that, I just don't even trade those days. Like I said, it shows that the market is going to be very indecisive. And how am I supposed to be decisive on my trades if the market doesn't even know what it wants to do, right? I need to have days where the market is like, hey, we're bullish as heck or hey, we're bearish as heck. And I will just wait for those days and I'll hit it hard with appropriate leverage Mind you, I'll hit it hard with appropriate leverage, but I'll let those days make my bank. And then I'm able to risk off on those other days and maybe play initial balance or some other plays. But for the most part, my risk on and risk off is going to be really decided by these liquidity maps. So my best risk on day is what we're going to draw right here. The most beautiful, beautiful risk on day for me is when we have this bull wall right here. Let's say price opens here, okay? Open. Okay, so now we have, let's write out half gap. Let's say half gap is right here, okay? Half gap is right here. And then let's also write out hedge pressure. I want to see hedge pressure probably right here around half gap. I mean, that's such a good setup. So delicious. They don't have to be the exact same level, but somewhere somewhere around each other. And then, yeah, that that's those are the two main things we're looking at. Oh, and then we got monthly hedge pressure, and let's just say monthly hedge pressure is like down here somewhere, way down below. Okay, the, better, the bigger separation, the better. What I want to see price do, let's pick a color for price. We'll do, we'll do yellow for price. I want to see price do is we're going to open we're going to be volatile and be like ah you know 
and then I want to see us sell down to this half gap and hedge pressure area, right? So we have a lot of liquidity down here. And we also have half gap, which is telling us, hey, if we stay above this, we should support this. We should rip the rest of the day, right? We should have a lot of bullish strength above. I am going to take a long at half gap slash hedge pressure. However, they're kind of configured here. I'm going to be looking at them. And I look at hedge or half gap with more strength right i'll probably hold out for half gap and hit half gap with more leverage maybe i'll scale in a little bit when we hit edge pressure first kind of depends on the volatility but either way i'm getting long in this area this whole area i'm getting very very long so i want to get long here and my plan is to get hold long i'm going to hold my scalp for 25 40 points what whatever whatever my first target is if i have a real clear target on volume profile you guys have seen the levels that i've drawn out i'll hold my core to that first level but then i'm going to hold some runners to infinity and beyond right we're going to have our next level and then our next level and depending on how prices i might hold my one last runner to end of day right because this is just such a like this is such a good setup to just rip all day now holding all the way to power hour i mean it's not generally super heavy recommended for me i mean there's a lot of risk on the table getting there around that noon chop hour and you might save yourself a lot of heartache just taking your profit when you get to those you know main levels it's also not financial advice do whatever you want i'm an idiot but that is that is my main oh my god i love this setup right in this whole area right here this is my risk area right i have to be defined on my risk be sure you're safe and know that the market has potential to go test the bottom of this bull zone it may wick just a little bit below it may go down and test it but just understand that that is your risk area now if price does dip into what is called the decision zone the d zone is what i'm going to call it if we get into the d zone here this is where it starts getting a little hairy and you need to really be paying attention and managing risk right ultimately the trade is completely off once we break into bear territory and we're, we're assuming that monthly edge pressure is way down there right if we go down and test monthly hedge pressure, then I'll obviously I'll take the long at monthly hedge pressure. But I'm assuming this is like 300 points down, right? This is a long ways down. So this area here, this decision zone, let's say I took a stop here, right? We broke out, we broke down here. Now I'm waiting for this midpoint to be tested, right? And I'm going to see what happens in this midpoint to top of bear zone and if i see a lot of absorption or a lot of bulls kick in a lot of buying then maybe i'll try another long and my target would be just the top of the bull zone or the bottom of the bull zone here right because once we break into here then this becomes another range situation until we break back out one way or the other but yeah this it becomes kind of less desirable i guess as far as sizing goes but yeah that's that's how i would play this exact situation here and the same can go for the bear side you would literally just do this exact same setup but in reverse monthly hedge pressure would be on top and daily hedge pressure or your weekly hedge pressure just regular hedge pressure is below that and I'll go ahead and draw this out as well. Okay, time skip. All right, so we skip forward a little bit so I could get everything erased. And we'll go ahead and draw this golden setup, but to the downside. And it's going to be the same thing. I want a nice, clean break of walls, right? Right, like two really big, clean break walls. We don't want a bunch of stacked bull, bear, bull, bear, bull, bear walls. Just two big ones either side and i want us to open on the bear side this time right so price is going to open right around here and for this one it's a clear bear setup so i want monthly hedge pressure 
right here. I want it still in the bear zone. And it's okay if it's up here too, right? It's fine if it's up here or even like up in here. That's completely fine. We're opening in bear territory, so we expect it to be volatile, right? This is also where a lot of patience comes in too. We do not front run any levels when we open in bear territory. I repeat, when we open in bear territory, we do not front run any of our levels. We wait for them to test. Why? Because we are very volatile when in bear territory, meaning our levels will test. Okay, that is a terrible, terrible bump we got there. Let's try that again. Yeah, we made it that time. Okay, so this is our ultimate bear setup. And what I like about this is I will short this with size. Same thing with our long to the other side. I'm going to open. We're going to be volatile as heck. And we're going to just be patient. We're going to come up. We're going to test this monthly hedge pressure. And same as last time, this is our risk, right? Just the edge of the bear zone is our risk. It's probably going to wick probably a little bit because volatility. And in this situation, we're not even worried about half gap when we're this volatile. I'm, when we open like this, I am just looking at monthly hedge pressure. And we're going to come up, test monthly hedge pressure. And my plan is that we are going to sell off the rest of the day. I will hold runners to end of day. We don't see setups like this unless we are very, very truly bearish. And if we do happen to break above a situation like this, then we are going to have an absolutely massive short squeeze. But in this situation, I'm not looking for the long. I'm completely out if we break above monthly hedge pressure and hold because it's going to be a very volatile, scary day. Yes, they can produce some really big moves, but... It's a very tough day to enter. Going to be a lot of wicks in both directions. For me, it's just not a risk on situation. I'm going to just sit flat or maybe trade with a very small size. But yeah, I'll trade with big size at the first hedge pressure test. Like I said, I will hold runners to all of my levels below. And if we break above, risk down, probably going to have a massive short squeeze situation. But yeah, those are the two really golden setups that we have. And there's a few other little setups that we will look at here as well. All right, and let's go over a few real-life examples and why they worked, why I think they would have worked, how I would trade them, how I did trade them. And yeah, just go over a few of these examples so you can have a better idea and kind of what happens during and in, in these maps. And one other thing to note here, they do have resilience. I know a few people will probably ask about resilience. I really don't use resilience. Some people really like it. I personally just don't use it. When we get to these levels of interest, I am going to watch time and sales and delta to decide if I want to take that long. Um, some people will use resilience in that way, but resilience is more of just a measure of the ratio of the underlying stocks and how they're performing kind of like an internal in a way. Um, but like I said, I just, I don't use it. I use time and sales and Delta. Use whatever you desire. It's completely up to you. But back to these examples here. In this situation, we opened in a bull zone. And as I said, when we open a bull zone like this, right, hedge pressure is above MHP, but hedge pressure in this case, it's white. It's way down here. I'm going to be patient and wait for my levels right we have a nice good setup right here at the bottom of the bull zone as you can see hedge pressures right here in the bottom of the bull zone however we also have half gap a little ways up here so i would probably take the half gap trade initially right we missed it right here like we were way front front ran it so i might have completely missed the morning and not even been present the afternoon and might have just missed this day entirely unless there was some really clear initial balance play that i caught um, but in this situation, like I said, it's obviously bullish. We're looking to long levels of support. We came down to half gap. Obviously, it's a level of support. We'll watch time and sales and delta. Decide if we want to get long. If it looked good, we would have got long. 
and health because this is a risk on type of setup because we're overall bullish on the day hedge pressure monthly hedge pressure everything kind of agrees we do have a really small bear wall right but then all of a sudden we have another big bull zone right below that so that's showing that overall the market is very very bullish and we just we consolidated that entire day but that's fine that's allowed to happen the next setup was actually the following day okay this was a breakout day and we opened again in a very bullish situation we opened in the bull zone hedge pressure is actually in the middle of the decision zone and in those situations i really do like longing in the decision zone because we have a clear area of liquidity there right i'm really expecting hedge pressure to support there and the decision to be to the upside however half gap was almost invisible we basically opened at prior day close right and we just took off from there and this is one of those situations where when we open in the bull zone we're opening right at yesterday's close at half gap basically i will try to long at open and then hold to close because look how little of risk we have right here right this is basically less than one strike price of risk to the bottom of the bull zone then obviously we would get another chance one strike price lower than that so 315 was the bottom of the bull zone and then hedge pressure was at 314 we would re-long again there to make another attempt to the long side but overall i mean this is just very very minimal risk for a really big upside potential as you can see it's a bull long up day that is the short code for these types of setup days and when the map says blu i am looking to long any levels of support so yeah this is that golden setup day that we were talking about i love this day right here so let's go to another day and this day we probably would have taken a stop i think i did take a stop on this day actually um so we opened bullish right but we actually opened with a gap down right so we opened bullish but open with a gap down rip right off the thing then we ended up selling way off hard to half gap and i probably would have taken this long at half gap just because of the situation but then we end up breaking down breaking down as you can see <clears throat> there was a little bit of support at half gap there's a little bit of support at hedge pressure and we just couldn't quite make it work we tested half gap and hedge pressure from the bottom and sold off all the way to the bottom of the bull zone as we were talking about that bull zone is our next long opportunity right this is our risk area that we have here so when you get to the bottom of the risk area i'm going to be looking for longs and i th believe i did take a long here because we had the higher low as well right at this decision zone right at the at the bottom of the bull zone trying to break into the decision zone higher low a bunch of buyers a bunch of green delta kicks in we get long and we hold to end of day and we have a great trade actually i believe i took profit right at hedge pressure um and i did not get to hold all the way to end of day because i'm silly but hey that's fine you can go back in the discord when we talked about this day i mean that's literally what paid out played out um was quite an interesting day like i said i believe i did take a stop over here earlier and was red just waiting for the next opportunity to long so when we start selling off like this as you can see i don't have any I don't have anywhere to long unless you have some longer time frame volume profile zones or something other than that like i said just just wait for something clear we finally got a clear setup we get long and have a great trade the next setup we got here is a bearish setup right this is a very um tough situation because macro view as you can see hedge pressure and monthly hedge pressure are actually pretty close right they're two strike prices away so we know the day is going to be volatile they're not on the same level so we know we're not going to have a breakout day to one direction or the other um i mean it could happen but we're not like totally betting on it but we open it's a gap down we open and in these situations i mean it's it's kind of gross right it's it's a risk off type of day we're not hitting anything with leverage we do go up to hedge pressure 
Not necessarily the place I want to short half gap and hedge pressure there. Mostly because macro, like I said, we're bullish. Maybe I do take a short there, but it's going to be with really light leverage because we don't have full bias in one direction or the other. It's one versus the other. So we end up kind of buying it up, being really volatile all the way to the end of the bear zone. Okay, and now the end of the bear zone ends up holding and then selling off, right? We got to this decision area. Bears decided, hey, we're going to keep it down here. They sell off. And like I said, I'm not taking really any longs. I mean, maybe you can try one here, but it's really light leverage situation still. And we actually sold off all the way to hedge pressure. And I do remember I took this hedge pressure long. We can go back to the Discord and see the trades and everything. But I took this hedge pressure long because I take every monthly hedge pressure long. Sorry, monthly hedge pressure long right here. I take it and boom, we have this reaction. Now, you don't always expect it's going to just rip endlessly at the end of the day. But the monthly hedge pressure area is of such high liquidity, you can almost always expect a bounce off of there. And that's what we got. Because, I mean, if monthly hedge pressure does break, then we are changing market conditions, right? We are changing the overall spectrum view of it to, like, the macro view is changing bearish. Here, the bulls held. This was their last line of defense. Next situation here, again, we're opening in a bear zone. Um, hedge pressure is still above monthly hedge pressure, right? It's, uh, you can't see it on the chart, but it is down here. So again, very, very strong risk off day, meaning we're not trading anything with size. We do reject off of hedge pressure and half gap. So if I did take a short with small size, I would have only held for a scalp. I'm not holding any sort of runners on these risk off days, just playing scalps. And we ended up closing within the gap. I mean, we tested monthly hedge pressure and half gap again. But really, like I said, when we open in these bear zones like this, we just know it's going to be volatile and choppy because monthly hedge pressure is below hedge pressure, right? The macro view is bullish, but the short-term view, our daily view is bearish. So it's just going to be those two fighting against each other. It's going to be gross. Risk off. The next setup we have is where we actually break to the bull side. Right, so we open in the bear zone and we know that it's going to be gross. Right, we, we are opening in the bear zone, so we're immediately not holding any sort of runners. We're just like, ah, what's going to happen here? And hedge pressure is in the decision zone. Right, so if anything, it's saying, like, hey, probably a short scalp here. Right, do you want to break to the downside? The daily shows that. And then we end up breaking above hedge pressure. I mean, if you took the short at hedge pressure, you would have gotten a scalp, right? We did go down a whole two strike prices. Um, but we ended up coming back and we got above and then we broke into the bull zone. And then we kind of just trended up the rest of the day. We did come back down. We retested the bottom of the bull zone. So, I mean, once we break up into here, I mean, it does turn into a bull long up situation, right? We break in here with velocity. And now we just are looking for the next long opportunity because we are in the bull zone. I mean, we broke deep into it. So all throughout here, I probably don't even get a long in, right? I'm probably just waiting. And then if I happen to be at charts when we come to test the bottom of the bull zone, I would be looking to take that long if time and sales delta all of that checks out. I mean, I believe this is also initial balance high. So, I mean, that all really, I mean, that would have been a great trade setup. I don't remember if I took this one or not. And then finally, the last thing we're going to go over here is what a disgusting map looks like. This is putrid. I open this up. I see it. I not only close charts, but I throw my computer out the window and go golf because I don't want to trade this. This, this entire day is probably going to be gross. I didn't even take a screenshot of it at the end of the day. Um, at least I don't have one saved in my discord anywhere here, but, uh, yeah, this, this is just major indecision, right? This is disgusting. I want no part of this. I have no idea which direction it's going to go. If I remember right, we just, I mean, it got all sorts of rangy and crazy. And, and when the market looks like this, I mean, you're really relying on hardcore 
price action TA. Something like Oso would probably trade really well in this environment because he can rely strictly on just his price action TA. Um, but for me, I don't have a bias. It's not only a risk off situation, it's a no risk at all situation. It's just, we'll, we'll chill and wait for a better day. But yeah, this is overall just how I look at Rocket Scooter, why I like it, how I use it. If you guys have any questions, comment down below, hit me up in Discord. Um, I'm not affiliated with these guys at all. I just like using them, right? I've used it for years. Gives me a good bias on the day. You guys see it in the Discord. Um, I do well with it. We stream well with it. And I like it. So if you don't like it, that's fine. I don't care if you don't like it or not. I personally, I do like it. So I use it. Um, but yeah, that's all I got. So I hope you guys found this helpful. Um, if you can, like, comment, subscribe. And we'll see you in the next one.